All right, so let's continue on some of this. I've got a couple little rust holes down here I saw after I finished that, so I'm gonna have to fix those. And then these brackets here, uh, I bought some, and they were made out of such thin metal. I'm gonna try and save the original ones here. Uh, I don't know what they made them out of, 20 gauge or what, those should be a little thicker than that. And uh, that was from Wolfsburg West, the best quality ones, and they were pretty thin. I mean, if you need the whole thing, it's definitely worth buying. But this one here, I'm just going to cut this off and make this piece here. Fix a little, little rust hole here. Oh, there's, oh, there's some along the bottom. Let's got to check. So we'll continue on with this. Check out what I'm doing.
that's been in there for 54 since 1954 67 years I had to cut that out inch by inch it's just so hard the rubber is it's just so hard I was gonna try and heat it up but it was didn't want to heat up the glass so I'm doing the rest of it
All right, so I made this shape right here on the metal bender. Then I'm going to take this and I still need to cut off a little piece here and mark it. So I'll just kind of mark it. And I'm not worried about it being perfect because you just tune it up with the grinder when you're done. If anybody thinks that sounds familiar, I was just watching uh, Fitzy's metal, and it's so funny. He does a lot of stuff the same. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that I do the that I do as nice a job as he does. He does an amazing job, but we just just the funny thing is when you do this stuff for a while. And somebody on the channel told me, hey, you should check out Fitzy's metal. He has some similar stuff to you. And I like, started watching him. I'm like, holy crap. It's exactly the way I would have made those things. And, but of course, you know, he does, like I said, he, his fitment is just way better than mine. He, he just takes more time. I don't have the patience. I know you guys think I do. But I don't. I don't really. I just want to get it in, weld it in, be done, and move on to something else. So I'll warp stuff a little bit, you know, where he doesn't. You know, he spends the time. And that's all stuff that, you know, if you want to, that's how you can do it. See, I'll just make that. And then what I'll do is I'll fill that in with a weld. Because that's so raggedy along there. Yeah. Probably good enough. I don't need the little piece underneath I should trim, but you look up and see these, so if you're looking up. So it should be good from underneath, but I'm happy with that. Alright, I'll clamp it on. Maybe I'll try the pincher on here. I don't know if I trust it with that. Kind of waiting for my batteries to charge them, so I figured a little, little show and tell. All right. Yeah. Guess I can weld that on first. Just run a bead along there. I'm just gonna run it bead, and then I'll cut this with the grinder, and I'll shape it and fit it in, make it look kind of like. It wasn't there and of course I found more holes here more holes there uh, another hole I don't know if you can even see up in here right there I already knew it. there's just there's a lot of very small areas to patch and some of those little areas take a lot more time like if I was going to replace if I had had a replacement panel for this and I replaced the whole thing it'd go in half the time but when you're making stuff and cutting little pieces and fitting them and trying to butt weld them in, it takes a lot more time than just doing one, you know, repair panel. Like fixing, just replacing this with another replacement one would be, uh, it, I don't know if it would really be faster. It might be a little bit because you got to clean up the metal. I don't know, I'd probably end up just replacing the inner panel you know before I put the new one on and then doing it that way but I'm gonna actually have this car the body off so when I go have the body off I have it up on the lift I'll have it up really nice and high I'll put the piece on the inside so this parts gonna get replaced but what I'm gonna do is take my little saw that little saw it's around there somewhere but take the little saw and I'll cut out behind here clean it, paint it behind here because you know you guys are probably wondering why I didn't do that. So I'm gonna paint it behind here. I'm gonna do that and then I'll just put a piece on. Probably on the inner panel if I can't see it from here, I'll probably just put a lap piece down a piece on there just to and then seam seal it. It's really not a very visible area. So I'm not trying to I'm I i do not stuff that I, you can never see I don't want to spend that much time on. 
I don't have an obsessive compulsive disorder. I worked my way out of that one a long time ago. So, you guys want to do all that little stuff? And it's a lot of pain, man. I'm telling you, it's a lot of pain. It's much easier to figure out how to manage it and get the car done and enjoy it. I get this a little bit tighter. I can just weld right there. Weld in that corner, just okay. All right, get back on it. All right, let's try it. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Not that bad. Let's make some patches for those. Fill them up. Like I got one right here, and this one usually, this is a good way to do these doors too. You're gonna have to do a little more to that one, I bet. Sometimes if you get a rust hole in the door, it's usually just isolated. You can use one of these bits and just run it in there rather than trying to cut it. It's faster, and then just make a round plug, fill it in. All right, so that's where we're at now. Um, I've still got a, this is a rust hole right here. Somebody filled it with filler. So, you don't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. If you notice, I cut along the line here and then I made my pieces here. And that what that does is give you a, a reference point. Um, this part, if you look at it, this part right here is a little bit rounded. I probably didn't round that up. And again, when I put the filler on this, it's gonna be fine. And again, the difference between me and some of the other guys is I will, and, and, and I'm saying it's right, it's just that I don't take the time to cool off every weld. I just weld it and then deal with it later if it's not too bad. You know, with the Harbor Freight welder, it doesn't warp it that much really. So it's not that bad, but you have to use filler. We're not looking for a metal finish job. So I'm going to cut here, I got to cut through here, cut out a piece, put one right there, and then I got to cut like right next to this thing and right next to here because there's rust holes along there and I'll pit it real heavy, so it'll be fun. There's just little stuff like that everywhere. Well, let's look at some stuff we found on this. You guys who have been watching this all the way through, you saw the back, you may not have noticed, but there was lead back there in the back and this has got lead in it too so this has been hit if you see here look at the wrinkles and then they filled it and repaired it with lead 
Some people say, oh, that's the right way to do it. You know, well, it's a way to do it. There's a lot of different ways to do body work. You can use lead. You can not use lead. You can still do a good job. Um, before they ever, you know, after they used to have only lead, and probably this was done in that point of years, you know, they didn't have good bondo filler or, or good body filler. Um, all they had probably was lead back then when they did this. Let's look at the inside of this panel. This is what's kind of, no, no, back years ago you'd go, oh, no, that was not worth restoring. Now everything's worth restoring. So let's look here. We've got, they cut this open, pounded that back out. A couple of spot welds on there. They figured that's good enough, right? We got to do a little better than that. So I don't know how straight this is. I'm going to pull the lead back off. Yeah, I got to start over. I'm going to look at it and see what they did. And I'll probably use plastic filler instead. I mean, I could use lead. I've done it before. Maybe I'll do some for you guys sometime. But um, I don't even know if I have all the tools anymore. I, there's something called a Vixen file where it's like a file that you use to cut the lead. And you just, you know. It's body filler. It still fails. Lead fails. Yes, lead does fail, just like every other body filler. Um, eventually, sometimes it just cracks, and you know, or it it stretches or it shrinks. It does all the same things that plastic fillers do. If they're applied correctly, the plastic filler will last just as long as lead. How about that one? And we got the same thing, but not the damage over here. No body damage. We got rust holes. Uh, all this stuff is. I don't know what's going on here. Why it's sticking way out? Should be flat, I thought. Maybe we just got caught on something. This one I'm probably going to do with the body off. Because where it's at, look where it's behind here. So. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do there. I might end up getting one of the lower corner pieces and then using a section of it to repair it. It might be easier. I'm not sure yet. Um, I can get one of these really cheap. Uh, this place sells them. Nice 18 gauge ones. Uh, so I might get one of those. I'm going to see if it comes with this threaded hole. If it does, it'd be worth it, I think. So if it if it wraps around, I don't know exactly where. I think it just goes around about right here, and then the rest of it I have to make, which isn't a big deal. You know, if I, if it's only like twenty bucks for that piece, it's worth buying it. We got the glass out, and surprise, surprise, right here too. There's some pinholes. So yeah, that's kind of normal. It doesn't look like there's any around the oval window, which is kind of weird. Usually the oval window gets the first of it. Um, but for some reason, this car was inside a spray booth and the spray booth started to leak. So um, I don't know, or it was partial. It wasn't a whole spray booth. And it was leaking and it didn't really have that much rust when it got in there, but it was in there for I want to say 20 years or more so that old spray booth was over there and it leaked water onto it and it was broken so I mean I, I saw this car a long while back and it was sitting there and I said oh wow what's the deal with that oh no he's not selling it you know so of course when it came up for sale I was interested in it so this is the seat that probably came out of this car. I'm 95% sure that this is the exact seat that was in this car. And I'm going to tell you the story of it. I looked up on the Samba for seats for sale. I found a friend of mine that I know, who both of us know, um, had this seat at his shop. And... I, so I called him. He wanted a lot of money, of course. And, you know, these seats are very expensive. And so I got one original seat. And there's another one here from a 57 that's different. But the seat backs are the same. So I bought it. I bought these both 
from the same guy. And I was talking to Dale <laughs> when we were working on his Gia and and I said, Yeah, I bought that seat from Sean and he goes, Oh, you bought seats from you bought a seat from Sean? And he starts the wheels start turning and I go, Wasn't Sean over at your 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 guys' shop like buying stuff? And he goes, Yeah, he bought some seats from us. <sighs> so I'm sure he bought them for like 10 cents on the dollar okay but he knew what he was looking at and they didn't know that these were the seats for the 55 or 54 or they wouldn't have sold them uh, this one was the seat for 54 there was two of them and I think he already sold the other one to some other customer of his and then I think he also bought this seat from them <laughs> and I paid a lot of money for these Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this seat and make it into one of those. So I'm going to, if you can see the difference is it goes wider right here. So I'm going to make it go straight like the other one. The seat bottom, this portion is the same except for, uh, let's see, I'll show you. So if you look here, this is a flat track seat from a 54, 54, early 55, 56. I think oval went to this style seat, and I think this is a 56 oval seat, 56, 57 oval, oval seat. And if you notice, this had a raked um, seat rail. So if you see here, this, is, this was raked. So what they did is on the early ones, they had the front taller. And on the later ones, they had the front shorter to make up for the rake so that the seat didn't lean back. So there's that difference. So all I got to do is cut this, move it up, weld it, probably maybe do some tubing repair. Um, and then take these off here, the adjusters, and just put basically a piece of tubing and then flatten the end of it and kind of bend it and beat on it a little right there to make it look like that so that's one of the differences the other difference is, is the you see this here has all these teeth on here so this one has only like two so what I have to do is take cut this piece off move it back here make one of these brackets okay and then put it in like that because it has to have this type of thing to be original looking for the 54 so this is probably the seat that came out of the car <laughs> it got around in circles but I got it back so at least I did get it back that was the positive thing I wish I would have got both of them that would have been kind of cool just to say that they were the seats that came out of the car I'm sure that car that one came out of that car I'm sure that Sean bought it from our our buddy, Dale's friend, um, and I'm sure that it, he just bought it because he bought a whole bunch of stuff and marked it all up and sold it for a lot more money, and they didn't know that was what was happening. As soon as they figured that out, they didn't sell to him anymore. So anyway, that's the kind of things that happens in this Volkswagen business, but it's a damn small world, you know. There's only so many of these 54 seats out there, so eh, it's probably the same one. So anyway, that's it for that. A lot of tool mess here I got to clean up. I was out of gas, so I finished up this part. I'm, I don't really want to start on to the next part. I'm going to actually, I wanted to get to epoxy primer. I've got to fill it, sand it, which won't take but a couple minutes. And then I've got to finish that little area there. I finish up this area and then I think I'm going to shoot epoxy primer on it and then right away go right in wait about 30 minutes or so wait till it just just that at the right time you got to know <laughs> and then you can do it without sanding it it'll go right into it with the urethane primer and uh, has to be just to where it's starting to catalyze pretty well but not like so hard that it won't you know that it won't be that it won't uh, bite to it 
it's kind of a practice so it takes you to do that so then I'm going to go over it with urethane primer right after that so I don't have to sand it and then you then I'm going to sand the urethane primer later and paint but I'll be doing more body work to it but I want to get the filler on first I noticed some guys are adamant about that you got to put the filler over bare metal I was that way um, and, you know until recently they've come out with fillers that actually adhere to the epoxy primer but the thing is I've seen so many people do it they don't sand it you have to sand it really really rough so it's really if you're gonna put epoxy primer you know down first as a as a as a wet as a bed and then go over that with filler you can do it but you really got to know what you're doing you got to make sure it's really rough sanded and you have to use the proper filler that sticks to it so I use the AG47 and spec to go over sanded epoxy primer. Got to read the specs on everything you do. If you do it wrong, you'll be doing it twice. So that's body work for you. All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. Please subscribe, see your comments, and talk to you in the next one.